So now we're going to talk about the reverse of rewards, which is punishment. So the way this metaphor works is when we talk about human motivation, we talk about offering carrots, positive rewards, carrots to get the mule to move forward, or sticks. And when we say the stick, that means we're not offering awards or prizes anymore. Now instead, we've got the stick. And that means, yeah, a little bit of pain, a little bit of discomfort, right? We'll definitely get that mule moving. And maybe it might not be the happiest mule, but it's effective. It certainly gets the mule going. And when the punishment doesn't happen, but even just the fear of the punishment, that will actually make that mule move. So, uh, we'll get clearer about the kinds of punishments that are appropriate and not appropriate for our assignment in class. But for now, just think of it that way. Different than rewarding, uh, dangling out a prize to get it to move forward. This is like, all right, dude, smack. Come on, let's go. Move it, right? And so maybe the prizes, we've got those set up, the rewards here in our board, returning to this one design. But somewhere in there, it might be important to use a little negative reinforcement. So like, uh, hmm, okay, man, let's see, one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four. Five days in, you still haven't moved? I mean, somebody somewhere should probably yell at you or do something, right? So here, maybe there might be a trigger, or you might set it up that if I miss three, Miss three, then what? Right? So if if I miss three, then now it has to be something uncomfortable. Now when I say that rule, I say it here right now. No hazing. So that means you do not set up punishments that are psychologically scarring or physically scarring or such deep uh, damage to one's reputation and um, public stature that it actually inhibits the ability for you to move forward in your career, move forward in your life, in your relationships. So no hazing rule here. Instead, you know it's an okay punishment if it's uncomfortable enough for you that that would, you're like, ooh, okay, I don't want to do that. So here's an example, okay? I don't like grading papers. I love being in class. I love teaching. I love designing classes. I love being with the students. But the hardest part of my job or like the most drudgery part of my job is to sit with a big stack of papers and grade them. And so it takes me a really long time. I'm like, oh gosh, I'd move really slow. So instead, I told all my students one semester just to experiment to see if this would work. I said, okay, guys, either I get all your papers graded and back to you by Wednesday, or I owe every single one of you a dollar. So that worked out to like $25. That's not going to kill me. I mean, it sucks, but it's not going to kill me, right? And But that's enough. That's enough to trigger in me, okay, a cognitive part of me that's just like, oh, hell no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to grade those things, and I ain't paying a dollar to any of you fools. No way. And boom, I am moving. I'm getting those papers done and graded and back to those students. And yes, I did not owe anybody a dollar because... I'm not doing that. Uh-uh. There. See, that's, that's a way to use discomfort 
and punishment to spur you forward. Let's say something happened and I didn't, you know, I didn't succeed in getting all the papers done. Okay, fine. So, all right, yeah, that sucks. I owe people 25 bucks and like I didn't follow through and ugh, okay. That's not career ending. That's not going to be something where I, I will never be able to face, show myself in public ever again, okay? Uh, that's not damaging to relationships or trust or people's faith in my character, okay? So that's not what we're talking about for our assignment. So, but this is something that can be helpful to us if we use it in a smart way. Why? Because we have what's called a negativity bias. I'll write that up there. And what that is, is our brains will actually react harder. We'll be motivated and we'll move faster to prevent the loss of resources more so than we will to, we won't move nearly as much for a positive gain in resources. So for example, if I said to all of you, hey guys, if you um, spent the next 12 hours writing a 20 page paper and it doesn't matter the quality, you could have a really good chance of winning a thousand bucks. Okay. Many of you would be like, yeah, that's cool. I'd like to have a thousand bucks. That's a positive prize reward, but you wouldn't actually be that motivated to do it. Let's change it though. If I said, hey guys, you need to write a 20 page paper or else you will lose $300. So even less money, right? That negativity, negativity bias kicks in and yeah, that gets us moving. Most of you will actually move, not because you want to earn a thousand bucks, because you're afraid of losing 300 bucks and that will move you forward. It's kind of weird, but it's true. It's, we are hardwired, our brains will do anything to avoid a loss more than we will to go after a gain. So we can use that in our favor here for this game, provided that we are choosing punishments that are smart, choosing punishments that will move us forward, that are uncomfortable enough to move us forward. But if we have to enact those punishments, then it's not so damaging to our social stature, our relationships, our psyche, anything like that. So if you need to check in with me about what's an appropriate punishment and what is not, and I can certainly give you feedback on that. So let's be careful about the punishments, but think about like what would spur you forward. So for me, it was, I am not going to pay everybody $30. I'm gonna grade these damn papers. And so that's what I did and it got me, it got me through, okay? You need to think of the equivalent for yourself and think of ways that you can build that into the game. Even if it's simply at the end here, Right. Let's think about the, the dad example where um, if he didn't succeed, his kids got to throw a pie in his face. And so the challenge was on and he was really motivated. I mean, he lost anyways. I think he probably lost just for fun too to let his kids throw a pie in his face. But he lost and the kids were so excited and he definitely didn't want to get a pie in his face, but then he got one. And so he was using a negativity bias to help move him through and motivate him. So think about your own. Uh, if you're really unsure, I think you should check with me first about what's an appropriate punishment and what is not to be built in the game. Absolutely no hazing of each other, but um, make it fun. Make it funny punishments are kind of good. Uh, ones that are a little hurt to your pride, that's fine. I think those are good. So um, yeah, we'll generate a list together in class about kind of healthy punishments, productive punishments that'll help move us forward. Okay. In the next video, we'll talk about how to randomize and bring a little bit of randomness to our gameplay and game designs.